In the high deserts of Nevada, where the wild horses and burros run free, is the setting for a YouTube documentary, Horse Rich and Dirt Poor. A few years ago, I was out here in northeastern Nevada to work on a, on a wild horse project. And I remember waking up and seeing hundreds of wild horses coming in from every direction. Just battling it out for a drink. That was such a transformative experience. Produced by the Wildlife Society, the movie takes focus on the ecosystem. We're setting out to meet up with some wildlife experts who have dedicated their entire careers to studying these ecosystems. We want to understand how wild horses are impacting not only the sagebrush community, but also species like the threatened Lohan cutthroat trout and sage grouse, a bird that could become endangered if its habitat continues to decline. It's a good watch for anyone who cares about open space ecosystems created by Mother Nature and oftentimes managed by humans in order to keep it sustainable for all users, including wild horses and burros under federal protection since 1971. There hasn't been one day in the Bureau's oversight of this program that it hasn't been caught in between polarized public opinion and extreme controversy in how BLM should be managing horses and burrows. Horse numbers are currently 300% above what the set-aside 30 million acres of rangeland can provide for. 50,000 horses and burrows are held in captivity across the West, costing taxpayers $50 million annually in care. Idaho is home to six herd management areas. Three of them are located in the Owyhees. One is north of Emmett, and then we have one in Chalice and one south of, of Glens Ferry. We have a, probably close to 800 horses on our rangelands. Three of our herd management areas are within what we call the appropriate management level. That being said, our other three herd management areas here in Idaho are over the high end of our appropriate management level. Raul Trevino, Boise BLM District Wild Horse and Burrow Specialist, says overall management areas in Idaho are in good condition. Here in Idaho, we're very fortunate to, uh, to not have the excess amount of horses uh, that other states may have. The rangelands are still in, uh, in stable conditions. Um, we do see some, some minor degradation or, uh, you know, around riparian areas, around water, um, a little bit of upland. Uh, but for the most part, you know, our rangelands are in good conditions. Uh, the health and well-being of the public lands is my first love and the most right. important thing. And that's what's really at the heart of the issue in wild horse and burrow management. It's about the health of the lands and taking care of them for diversity and wildlife and for future generations to enjoy our public lands. BLM offers adoption programs with various incentives to help reduce horse numbers on the range. A wild horse herd can actually double in size every four years and they don't have any natural predators and so that's when BLM will go in and we will gather the excess animals and then we will offer them for adoption. That's been our primary tool to be able to manage um, the excess numbers. We've placed over 271,000 animals into private care since the 70s. Wild horse management is a complicated issue, as the documentary Horse Rich and Dirt Poor points out. Visit wildlife.org backslash horse dash rich dash dirt dash poor to view the movie. For the Voice of Idaho Agriculture, I'm Steve Ritter.